Most people that have been fly fishing or fly tying for a number of years have run across the name of Jack Gartside at one time or another. Very influential fly fisherman and fly tire. Part of the beauty of a lot of the patterns that he came up with was their simplicity. Just basic, simple patterns put together, but just extremely effective. This week, I'm tying up the Jack Gartside um, Soft Hackle Streamer. It is, a again, a simple pattern, a little bit of flash in it, some palmered marabou, and palmered mallard flank, and that's about it. But it is extremely effective. It's a fun pattern to tie. In no time, you can have a bunch of these tied up, and you can vary the colors up pretty easy. So if you want to, you can change up, you know, the, the uh, mallard flank colors or even some of the base marabou colors. I generally stick with the white. It's just a fun, fun pattern to tie up and fish. We will get started with the Jack Gartside Soft Hackle Streamer. Going to start the Gartside Soft Hackle by placing our hook in the vise. I'm using a Mustad 3366 in a size 2 for this. You can use basically any short shanked, wide gapped type bass streamer hook with a straight eye. I'm going to go ahead and debarb the hook. You don't need a real long shank on this because the, all of the pieces and parts to the fly are all tied within the, the first one quarter of the hook shank right here. So all of this really isn't used. After you've tied the fly in here, all of this simply dictates where the point of the hook is going to fall in relation to the length of the overall fly. I'm going to attach my thread behind the eye of the hook. I'm using a white Danville 6 aught for this. Be careful because the tendency uh, when you first start tying this fly is to wrap your thread down to about halfway down the hook shank. Really, everything gets wrapped in and palmered within that first order length of the hook shank. The first thing that we're going to tie in is some flashaboo. I'm using some holographic silver flashaboo for this, and I usually like to pick out anywhere from two to three strands. So I'll get three strands, and I'll clip those to their full length. I'm going to tie those in at the halfway point, being careful not to go past that one quarter spot on the hook shank. Again, the tendency is to kind of keep wrapping down. And I'm just going to leave those all long for now. Next, I'm going to tie in some flash accent or crystal flash if you have some. This is pearl and I just like the flashaboo I'm going to take three strands and this I'm going to pull three full strands out of the package. I want these all long because then I can trim them to the length I want. I'm going to wrap those in, in the same spot on the hook shank and secure those in. These are kind of get in your way. You can use a material clip to hold them back. Sometimes I'll even just wet my fingers and run that along them and that will help to kind of keep them tamed um, behind the hook shank. The fly really is comprised of just two different materials. It is a blood quill marabou and a mallard flank feather. The blood quill, when you get these, you want to look for one that has a nice kind of rounded uh, full look to it. At the same time, you also want to get one that has a long thin stem. And I'll show you in just a minute. 
this portion of the stem is too thick. If we try to tie that in and palmer it, it's going to crack. So right about here is where we're going to cut this to tie this in. Jack Gartside preferred to tie these in the butt ends right here and then palmer them forward. And the primary reason is, is that the first fibers of this feather that are laid down are the longest ones right here. And then subsequent wraps, you're getting into shorter and shorter fibers as you get up to towards the eye of the hook. That's just his, his preference, the way he liked to do it. So if you want to tie these the way traditionally he did it, there you go. I tie them in by the tip. And the reason is that if I tie this in by the tip, when I start palmering, it's the shorter fibers here that go down first, and it's the long ones that are the last ones to palmer in and, and end up on top. What this does for me is it tends to give me a fuller body. The shorter fibers underneath all of these long fibers here tend to support those long fibers a little bit more. And so when this is in the water, it doesn't lay down quite as flat like this. It stays a little bit, has more of a minnow profile. At least that's my thinking, my, my reasoning for it. So that's why I do it. So anyway, I'm going to take my blood quill that I choose and I'm going to strip away the fluff right down to where the, ha the hackle stem starts getting too thick. I'm going to take about, oh, um, a quarter of the whole length on the tip. I'm going to separate that so I can tie that in right where I tied in the flash of boot. I'll take this, instead of cutting it off, I'll just fold it back. We'll use it in the fly. Now I'm going to wrap my thread forward up to about an eye length from behind the hook, the eye of the hook. If you want to, I like to add a little bit of head cement right here. It is going to help secure the stem of that feather along that thread and, and just make it last a little bit longer. I'm going to take, moisten my fingers, stroke these fibers back, and start palmering that feather around. find while you're doing this is occasionally you're going to have to stop, take your bodkin, and pick out some of these fibers. They kind of get wrapped down with subsequent wraps, whether you like it or not. And so just to keep those from getting too tangled together, I stop every now and again and fold those down or pick those out. Even though I'm pretty much right behind the eye of the hook, that's fine because I can wrap down on this a little bit and it makes some room for our mallard flank. Tidy this up and make a little platform for palmering our mallard flank, even wrapping back just a little bit. It's just going to secure all those a little bit more. And I'll probably end up about an eye length to one and a half eye lengths behind the eye of the hook here for our mallard flank. Now for the mallard flank for this, you're looking for a feather similar to the, the marabou, you're looking for a feather that is going to have a long, thin stem here, okay? Um, 
one that, you know, if you get into this part right here, it'll crack, but I could wrap almost all the way right down to here without it cracking or, or being a problem. You want long fibers. You can get some that are even much, much longer, but remember that these are gonna be wrapped in, so the length of the fibers here, this is, it's going to dictate um, how much of the front half of this is covered up. If you pick a feather with shorter fibers, then you're only gonna be covering up just a little bit in the front here. You pick one with real long fibers, you may have, you know, two thirds of this being covered up by um, mallard flank fibers. I'm gonna go ahead and trim away the fluff on this. Now, Jack Gartside also liked to tie this in by the butt end. And on this, um, on this point, I agree with them. And the primary reason is it's easier to fold these fibers back and then wrap in front as you're moving forward than tying in the tip. I don't want the front of this to be all bulked and flared out. I want the body to be. I want these to lay flat along that. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut all but just a little bit of this stem off. I'm going to secure that right along the side of the hook. And then I'm going to get my thread right up behind the eye of the hook. For this, I'm going to use my um, hackle pliers. I like these um, Griffin hackle pliers. They, they swivel right here. Your fingers on that brass will turn. This will move. And it, it really helps in getting around the uh, bobbin and everything when you're palmering this in. So I'll grab a portion of the tip right here. Again, I want to make certain I'm stroking these fibers back and see when I wrap these in, they're going to lay in really, really nice along the fly and they're not going to be uh, pushed out in an upward direction. Generally, you're going to get four or five wraps of this hackle on here. You can move this out a little bit, get yourself another wrap or two. You want to try and make certain you're not getting any of these fibers trapped. And then when I get up to the last bit right here, you could turn around and um, tie that in and trim it off, but I don't. I just include it into the fly and it works just as well. So I will stroke all of these back and starting from right behind the eye of the hook, I'll wrap my thread backwards, just creating a little head to the fly covering up all of those mallard flanks. And this also lashes down the mallard flank in a rearward direction. Notice how all of that tends to, sometimes you get some that kind of twisted and flip out, and that's fine, but for the most part, all of the mallard flank tends to flow alongside the marabou and not stand out from it. I'll put in a four or five turn whip finish to finish off the head here. Some head cement, just to seal that up a little bit. And the last step is to trim our flashaboo. I like to have the flashaboo and crystal flash about a quarter of the length of the overall fly behind the marabou here. So I will trim this, and I tend to trim this so that they're different lengths. So I'll trim a little here, move back a little more, a little bit more. What this does by having those stick out behind the body is the body will flow like this in the water, but then these sticking out will flutter much more right behind the, um, the, the back end of the body of the fly. So that is the Gartside Soft Hackle. 
an extremely easy, simple fly to tie. You're, you're going to spend more time trying to find the right blood quill and mallard flank feathers than you are going to be tying the fly. It's that quick and easy to tie. But it's also a very, very effective pattern. Uh, it's a great streamer fly. I generally keep the, the white base, uh, marabou as, as a base, but you can certainly use a yellow or something like that if you wanted to, a gray. I will change up the mallard flank here, so you can use a chartreuse, you could use um, a yellow, uh, brown, or something like that if you wanted to, just to give it a little bit more color. By all means, if you do a search around, you'll see all kinds of different colors and combinations for this. Um, some people who add some weight to it, some people who um, put cones on the front of them, all kinds of different things. Uh, so experiment and have a little bit of fun. But that's the Gart Side Soft Hackle. Thanks for joining me at the Vice today. I hope you learned at least a new pattern, if not a new technique, maybe a tip or trick here and there. If you have any questions about this fly or any of the techniques used in constructing this pattern, please leave them in the comments section down below. If you go to the trouble to ask a question, I'll go to the trouble to answer it. If you'd like to help dressed irons, please share this video with your friends and anybody you think that might enjoy this pattern. Until next time, remember, it's fly time. If you're not having fun, then you're doing it wrong. <laughs>